I believe that this reflection is timely for the season that we're in, for it has been marinating in my spirit for a while. The sermonic text has been lifted up in your hearing, but beloved, I'm going to read verse eight of 2 Samuel chapter nine. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8. And it reads, Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? And for a little while, beloved, I want us to reflect on this thought. I am a child of the king. I am, you maybe need to tell yourself that I am a child of the king. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? Once again, God, I stand behind this sacred desk not taking this preaching moment for granted, but realizing that people have pressed their way in the sanctuary and even the sanctuary that is on their heart, Father God, to hear a word from you. God, with all that is going on in the world today, God, we, we desperately need to hear from you. So come, Holy Spirit, come with your quickening power. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said, amen. amen. Beloved, I am a child of the king. Low self-esteem. Questioning your worth, feeling lost, wandering aimlessly, not feeling a sense of purpose, not understanding your value, feelings of insecurity, blankets of anxiety, bouts of depression, whether we own up to it or not. Many today are suffering from an identity crisis. Some might laugh. Some might laugh it off as a midlife crisis. Young people or young adults may dismiss it as growing pains. However, if the truth be told, all of us have experienced a period of uncertainty or confusion lately. We're still coping with COVID. We are living with the aftermath of tornadic weather. We are dealing with the death of loved ones. We are trying to endure inflation. We are surviving chronic illnesses and we're managing one traumatic event after another and we have little or no control over it. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired in our sense of purpose and belonging. It is lost at best, and therefore we find ourselves constantly trying to redefine who we are. Constantly trying to prove our worth, and we're trying to prove our worth by the world's standards and not by God's loving kindness towards us. I believe 
I believe that's why we're having so much violence in our community today. So many tragedies in our community today because we are suffering from an identity crisis. Our identity, our identity may be shaped by our experiences, good and bad relationships good and bad shaped by our memories good and bad shaped by our values good and bad but i've come to remind you this morning that you are a child of the king because you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. You are a child of the king. Beloved, shall we engage the text? You see, Brother Brock, uh, in our sermonic text, we're being introduced to Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan uh, and the grandson of who? King Saul. King Saul is dead. Jonathan is dead. And Mephibosheth, he finds himself living in exile, perhaps fearing for his life. You don't want to know why? Because it was common practice back then. And I would say even today, Putin, to kill, to try to exterminate, if you will, all of the members of a family's, uh, of the king's family, because he doesn't want any descendant to try to come back and seek the throne. So when Mephibosheth, was at the tender age of five. When the report uh, about the fate of Saul and Jonathan reached uh, Mephibosheth's caregivers, the Bible records uh, that his nurse uh, picked him up in haste and was fleeing to safety. But as she was hurrying to flee, the Bible says that he fell and he became lame. In other words, Mephibosheth, he was unable to walk. Now, Jonathan has died in battle and King Saul has taken his own life. And Mephibosheth is in a crisis, but he is also suffering from what in our identity crisis. I believe that there are at least three life lessons that we can glean from Mephibosheth's life. Number one, your identity is not in Lodabar. Your identity, I know it don't make sense, but just come on, Holy Ghost, help me out, uh, is not in Lodabar. You see, now David uh, is king of Israel. However, King David, you know, was a man after who God's own heart. And even the bloody wars that David fought against the Philistines had not destroyed or made him hurt. It did not break the tenderness of who? David's heart. And although Jonathan is dead, Jonathan and David, they were bound together in close friendship. And the two men, they had made a covenant. They had made a solemn agreement that they would support each other, even though they faced the constant challenge of having conflicting loyalties to King Saul. Jonathan's daddy and David's arch enemy. However, even in death, can I tell you that David, he honors the friendship. I'm in the Bible. Look at verse three. The king asked, is there no one still alive 
from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness. Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Makir, son of Amiel, in where? Loda Bar. Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was crippled. He was living in poverty in a remote and barren corner of the kingdom. He was living in Lodabar, the place of no pastor. Lodabar, a place that you didn't particularly want to be. Lodabar, it was a dry, parched, crummy place to live. Mephibosheth was hiding out where in Lodabar. And you too may be hiding out, living in your own Lodabar, living in a spiritual desolate place. Maybe you are there in Lodabar because of a failing relationship. The shame of a divorce, some abusive situation, maybe some type of financial problem, maybe just the wrong choice that you have made. Maybe your body is attacking your peace with so much pain, or you simply tired and growing weary and well-doing. So now you've chosen. It's time to hide out. I'm going to Lodabar. Beloved, if the truth be told, from time to time, we all experience spiritually dry seasons, especially when our prayers appear to go unanswered, uh, especially when you are in the waiting room uh, called life. Beloved, there are always twists and always turns in our life. Don't you know we will never know what will happen on tomorrow, but we live in assurance that God is holding our tomorrow and God is holding our future and God knows the plans that he has for you, says the Lord. God. God desires not just eternal life for you. This is where I'm going. But God also desires that you have an abundant life right now in the here and the now and today. The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Don't miss that. He said, I'm just a vessel. I'm just an instrument. I want to see who God uh, can bless. I want to show who God's kind is. And I'm just here to tell you, I believe that God is seeking you out today. That God wants to show you some kindness today. That God wants you to experience the fullness of his joy today. That God is still on the throne and God is speaking life even while you are still where? In your low debar. Can I tell you what the word of God says? He says, for I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. God says, I will pour out my spirit 
on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. So stop acting like it's all about you. You need to be concerned about your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. You need to be concerned about generations to come because we serve a God. No matter how spiritually dry you may be, he will pour water on the first the land. So if you can hear my voice, then I believe that the Lord is seeking you out today. But can I tell you, it's up to you to respond. Hey, the Bible says to us, seek the Lord while he what may be found. To call on him. Come on, y'all. Uh, wow, he is near. And if you find yourself uh, in a spiritual uh, dry place, uh, then I tried my best to sing it yesterday. Uh, but you need to ask the Lord to fill my cup. Uh, I lift it up, Lord, uh, to come and quench uh, this thirsting of my soul. Uh, that bread of heaven, uh, feed me till I want no more uh, to fill my cup. Uh, fill it up. And make me whole. Beloved, your identity, your identity is not in Lodabar. Come on, tell yourself it's just a season. Stop acting like a, it's a lifetime because seasons change. It is just a season that you're going through. So your identity is not in Lodabar. Number two, your identity is not connected to your crisis. Hey, David said, uh, Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth said, at your service. I'm at verse seven. Don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul. And you will what always, uh, go ahead media team, uh, eat at my table. Verse 8, Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Mephibosheth, the grandson of a king, not only refers to himself as a servant, but he refers to himself as what a Dead dog. Dead dogs were contemptible to the Jews. In other words, dead dogs were the lowest of low. Oh, come on, Bible scholars. The Gentiles were referred to as dogs, but even dogs deserve to eat the crumbs from the master's table. That's how Mephibosheth. That's how he saw himself, a dead dog. Compassion and, and loving kindness were flowing from the throne of King David, but Mephibosheth, he could not receive it. Why? Because he felt that he did not deserve it. Don't you know that the world has a way of subtly, such subtly, subtly, S-U-B-T-L-Y, I know what I'm trying to say, y'all pronounce, subtly. The world has a way, uh-huh. In other words, they not overt about it. They ain't up in your face, I know what it means. They just sneaky, okay. The world has a way of being sneaky. That's just change the word. Delivering messages 
that keep people being down. Keep people scared. Keep people in bondage. Those who accept those messages are what easily manipulated. You are easily controlled. You are easily discouraged. And far too long, too many of our people have brought into the notion by the way they act that we are three-fifths of a person. But can I tell you that's a lie straight from where the pit of hell that is just a trick of the enemy. The devil, the devil wants nothing more than to steal, kill, come on, and destroy your joy. The enemy seeks to strip us of our identity in Christ. But beloved, your identity is not in the crisis that you underwent. Come on, watch this. David, he said nothing about the lame feet of Mephibosheth. Oh, you can, check, you can check the text for yourself. In other words, David, he did not even dignify, he did not even co-sign on Mephibosheth calling his own self a dog. Because David, he saw Mephibosheth not because of his crisis, but because of what? His great love. You see, in Hebrew, Mephibosheth means dispeller of shame. In other words, one who destroys shame. You still ain't got it. It is the end of your shame today. Uh huh. You see, David's invitation uh huh ends the shame. But can I tell you that Mephibosheth, uh, he has to what? Accept the invitation. God is extending an invitation to end your shame. Oh, you missed that. <laughs> In other words, that mind trip, uh-huh, that, that shame game. That folk been playing with you for eons. I'm not talking last week. Some of y'all 60 years old and still dealing with stuff that happened at 13. But can I tell you that the shame game, it is today because your identity is not connected to your crisis. God. God still looks beyond our faults and ministers well to our needs. Don't you know that God uh, is the God of what? Second chances? That he is the God of failures? That he is the God of thieves? He is the God of drug addicts? He is the God of adulterers? He's the God of whoremongers. He's the God of liars. He's the God of traitors. He's the God of those who repent that God wants your shame today because I'm trading my sorrow and I'm trading my shame and I'm laying it down. So the joy of the Lord your identity is not connected to your crisis. Can I tell you where your identity is, though? It's in your covenant. Your identity is in your covenant. You're looking at me strange. In 1 Samuel Bible Scholars, chapter 20, verse 15 and 16, David and Jonathan, they make a pact. They make a covenant. In other words, they make a solemn agreement that they will support each other, even though they face the challenge of having already said a, a conflicting loyalties with who King Saul. But can I tell you what Jonathan said 
to David. Jonathan told David, and may you treat me with the faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. But Jonathan said, said, but if I die, it's almost as if he knew. The brother said, but if I die, treat my family with this faithful love that even when the Lord destroys all your enemies from the face of the earth, he says, treat my family with faithful love. And now we go back over to our text. And David is honoring the covenant in verse nine. Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul uh -huh. and his family. Verse 10. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for and Mephibosheth, the grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. You missed that. Mephibosheth didn't even have to what? Lift the hand. And God will supply what? All of his needs. I just believe that some of us don't realize that we are where we are today because of the prayers of Big Mama and Pop Pop that they threw up timber in the house. But just as David was in covenant relationship, help me Holy Ghost, with Jonathan. Beloved, we are, we are in covenant relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. You see, when we accept the gift of salvation, when we accept Jesus as our personal savior, and we promise to serve the Lord. Don't you know that we become what? Children of the King with all the rights and with all the responsibilities and with all the benefits that go with what? Being a child of the King. I know you're looking at me and you're wondering, what's my point? Well, every now and then, I believe we have to do an identity check. And you need to remind yourself that I am a child of the king, that I'm a child of the king of kings uh -huh. and the Lord of lords, yeah. that I am chosen, accepted, and I'm included in a member of God's household yeah. of faith, that I am redeemed, yeah. that I've been bought uh, with a price and that Jesus has changed uh, my whole life, that I have access to God, that I can go to him in prayer uh, anytime uh, and anywhere uh, for any reason. Uh, you need to know that I am loved unconditionally uh, by God and that if God is for me, uh, it does not matter uh, who may what stand uh, against me uh, because no form against me shall ever prosper in every tongue which rises up against me in judgment I have the right to condemn that nothing and no one shall separate me from 
the love of God, not hurt, not pain, not loss, not problem, not brokenness, not persecution, not trouble, not difficulty, not danger, not abandonment, not abuse, not addiction, not life, not death, not angels, not demons, not my past, not my present, nor my future, not even Satan himself. I am a child of the king. Beloved, God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. Priceless. Woo! Undefiled. Priceless. Can never decay. Priceless. Will never change. Priceless. I have an inheritance that is priceless. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. The Lord me. Come on, y'all. Speed, Everybody, everybody, everybody get a name in your spirit right now. Everybody that you know that's going through an identity crisis. Everybody who you know don't realize that they are a child of the king. Everybody who is outside of the safety that you know. String out. We are trusting God. We are trusting God. So there's somebody under the sound of my voice. You know that you're not a child of the king. You know that you never give me your to Christ, but I am so grateful that if you can hear me, that means that you've been given another opportunity to accept your Savior. If you are outside of the safety, you're not sure of your salvation. Come on, let's pray a prayer. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, that when he shed his blood, that he will wipe the slate clean, that he will wash your sins as far as he is. 
because in three days he rose with power. And he rose with Holy Ghost power. To sustain sustain. Beloved, if you pray the prayer of salvation, if you ask the Lord to come into your heart, come on, we need to hear from you at St. Paul. Come on, direct us, direct us, direct us. Us, uh, inbox us, uh, pick up the phone Say and call us 334 286 8577. God, Say with you. Say with you. Yeah. Church, put your hands together. Let us celebrate Jesus. For indeed, he is worthy. Worthy. To be praised. Beloved, what time is it? It's giving time. Beloved, what time is it? It's it's giving time. It's time to bless the Lord, beloved, in the ministry of giving. And I invite you, beloved, to prepare your offering at this time. Amen. We're going to read our giving verse together. Beloved, let us read. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we invite you to prepare your offering at this time. If you want to give online, we support Giblify, PayPal, and Cash App. Our cash shop is dollar sign S-T-P-A-U-L-M-G-M. And there should be a little card, amen, in your pew that outlines how to give online. We strongly encourage you to use Zelle, for with Zelle, there is no fee. Or you can mail in your offering, 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or we have a locked mailbox behind the church in which you can drop it off. So for those in the sanctuary, after the pulpit has given their offering, we're going to ask those on my right, amen, and your left, if they will start at the rear and then come around, and the ushers will assist, assist you, and when they're completed, then we'll go to my left, your right, amen. Bless us with some giving music, amen. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and 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 praise the Lord with me. The 
Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Oh, Come on and do your dance with me. 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 Come on and do Clap your hands if you love Jesus. 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 Clap your All things come of thee, O Lord. Amen, amen, Lord. We know that in this season, this critical season, the some are trusting you in their tithes of offering and some are sowing out of their lack. But God, we ask you to multiply seeds that have been sown and we trust you to know, God, what folk need in this season. Multiply their seed back to them, some tenfold, some a hundredfold, some a thousandfold. Some don't need the money, God. Some need a peace of mind. Some right now need healing in their body. Some need restoration of relationships. God, we're not promoting a theology and that we can buy a blessing. That is not what I'm saying, God. We're just showing you, God, that we trust you in every aspect of our lives. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God in agreement said amen. 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 And amen. Amen. The announcements, please, you may be seated.
the move of God in your life in 2023. Continue to pray, fast, and trust God to provide your needs, keep his promises, fight your battles, heal your brokenness, deliver and restore in God's own unique way. Remember, what's impossible with man is always possible with God. On Sunday, February the 12th, Team St. Paul will be celebrating the AME Church's Founders Day and Chaplain Tara Dixon of Maxwell Air Force Base is our guest preacher. Please wear African attire that Sunday and be prayerful about giving your Founders Day assessment. Valentine's Skate Party for Adults and College Students will be on February the 16th at 7 p.m. at 2211, the ultimate play zone. Love is in the air, so let's skate, educate, test, and prep. Adults are $10, and college students with ID is $5. This is a She Looks Like Me event sponsored by the Health Ministry. The Health Ministry invites you to also know your status. Free HIV testing will be every first Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and free blood pressure and glucose checks will be every third Sunday immediately after worship. Ministry leaders, if you have announcements, please contact Brother Dwight Martin seven to 10 days prior to the event. This is from the office of Bishop Seawright. Dear Ninth Episcopal District, on Thursday, January the 12th, 2023, a catastrophic tornado moved across the central United States. A string of devastating tornadoes traveled through several cities in Alabama, killing seven people, one of whom were related to an AME church member. It is times like these that we recall the mission of the AME church, which is to minister to the social, spiritual, and physical development of all people. The Connectional Church's vision of carrying out the spirit of the original free African society includes serving the needy. Jesus calls us to do the same. As an Episcopal district, we accept this challenge of serving those affected by these storms. It appears that the greatest loss of life was in the city of Otagaville. One of our AME churches was severely damaged in that area. Pastors and members of our AME family are in great distress. I call on all ninth district churches and members to join in a mission relief effort to help those in need. Monetary donations to help members and churches recover are needed. Also, gift cards, baby diapers, baby formula, water, soap, feminine hygiene products, masks, hand sanitizer, toiletries, flashlights and batteries, trash bags, tote bags, luggages, paper towels, toilet tissue, cleaning and disinfecting wipes, baby and children's toys, along with laundry detergent. Because of Christ, I am Bishop Harry L. Seawright, presiding prelate of the Ninth Episcopal District. The Montgomery Selma District contact coordinators are Reverend Dr. Kathy Bruce and Hazel Bellamy. Please contact for more information. Lastly, please keep our sick and shut in and our church family in your prayers. And please join us for our 12 noon prayer call. Have a great day, have a great week, and please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen, amen. Just one uh, to bring to attention that Mount Calvary is actually in the community of Beloy, which is outside of Selma. Uh, I am grateful that Dr. Bruce and I, because of your loving kindness, were able to go down on Thursday. We did uh, turn in uh, gift cards of $25 den dollar denomination totaling a total of $525, which you contributed. Grateful for Sister Val for picking them up. In addition, uh, Quincy uh, had a cousin that donated uh, several shoes, and we've been trying to get them shoes for over a year, but God knew when those shoes were supposed to come to St. Paul, and we delivered over 100 pairs of shoes on Thursday as well. So, beloved, if you have additional items that you would like to uh, uh, bring, do note that clothes are not on the list, that St. Paul is a drop-off site. St. Paul is a drop-off site, and you have until this Friday, 5 o'clock p.m. to do so. And please contact, contact Sister Hazel Bellamy. 
Amen. Or Reverend Dr. Kathy Bruce, they are the outreach chairpersons, amen, for the Alabama River Region, Montgomery Selma District for this disaster relief ministry. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Well, we praise uh, God, amen, for you worshiping with us today. And we are praying for God's bountiful blessings upon you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, praise him. Father, Son. Beloved, receive the blessing. Every now and then, just remind yourself that I am a child of the King. That I am a child of the King. Beloved, I am a child of the King. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you real good and allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon each and every one of you and be gracious to you. May the Lord guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus and give you peace that's a path of all understanding. Today, tomorrow, and forevermore, and the people of God stand. The neighborhood is We sing praises to our king for he is the king of kings. We sing praises to our king for he is the king of kings. We sing praises to our king for he is the King Oh, Yeah. 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 Yeah.